we are moving on with our campaign. Today is 31st October. Yes. Uh, 31st, this was supposed to be the day when this was supposed to be the when day. the primaries happened. Exactly. Okay. So Ni is also one of the aspirants to the NBC uh, parliamentary candidate position. Oh, do, 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 do. Um, and you're supposed to have the primaries today, but you're not. No. It has been put on hold. Put on hold again. Yes, it's been put on hold uh, because of an appeal. Mm. Uh, that against the vetting that mm. we had uh, okay. some few weeks back okay. and that is and other matters the, uh, the, the those hooligans who went destroying okay. properties of the party at mm. the regional uh, office and okay. um, and those are the reasons why it has been put on hold and a committee set to look into these two issues mm. I understand to uh, Aspirants, um, and I understand they have an issue with you. Yes, they will have an issue with me. Well, I mean, um, I think we know the history. I sometimes don't want to glorify their uh, pain, okay. um, but they have an issue with me, and the issue is simple. Okay, they know they are in a minority. They are in the a minority. very least minority. And they know with me in there, there is no way they are going to win. So you think the issue they have with you is that if you stay in the race, they won't win? Well, so they need to get you out. Well, you see, there is a a history to this. There is a history to this. Okay. Uh, Before we we started campaigning, um, the initial opening of nomination mm. uh, was announced. Then we started campaigning. Okay. Uh, we started campaigning, and all their campaign message was, uh, we will get done disqualified. Nia Boyanan will be disqualified, disqualified, disqualified. In fact, every meeting of delegates, okay. the message has been, we will get Nia Boyanan disqualified. disqualified. Then we went for voting, and I I hope uh, you saw the crowd. Yeah. What we did was to make sure that everybody who followed me there mm. was a delegate, was a branch executive. Okay. In fact, you will see some drummers on 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 the vehicle on a pickup. Yeah. That is a sixty-four group. Each one of them are delegates. You will see the acrobats. Each one of them are delegates. You will see the brass band and uh, Kolomashi from the Al Jazeera branch. Each one of them are delegates. So, on that day, when they saw the picture, Mm. it was clear to them that they have lost. The things they destroyed there was an afterthought because they have exited the premises before we exited the premises. Okay. And then the question is, who asked them to get back to do what they did? You're suggesting they were instructed to do that? Oh, yes. By A lot of those who were involved have come to me. We just want to keep the sanctity of what we are doing in Ododo Diodo and make things calm because we are in the majority. And therefore, the onus is on us to be more responsible. But do they have the case when they say you should be disqualified? They don't have a case. In fact, one of the those contesting me Koteashi, on the former executive platform, had confessed on there when the former executives started questioning him on that platform. He had said that, yes, I saw Don in 2019 2020 meeting branch executives. Branch executives in 2019 have written to me personally 
and the evidence are all there. Hmm. Well, so as far as you're concerned, they have no case at all. They have no case. Their only case is they see their defeat, and it will be so shameful that if they don't take care, even 10%, they will not race together. Well, I, like I said, I have in studio me, your boy, and then like he is an aspirant uh, for the do, 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 NDC parliamentary candidate and also a financial analyst. We'll try to do a lot more within the short space of time that we have. And I'm, I'm going to go back to uh, move you from that one to another issue. Of course, because we, we will talk about it. when the, But you don't know when it will... No, it has not been communicated. The committee, I'm not sure, had finished their work, okay. uh, submitted their report to National, and then uh, FERC also issuing uh, whatever communicate to us. But uh, have you appeared before that committee? Yeah, I've appeared to the committee. So the committee uh, has heard you? Yes. You, you are sure? I am 100% yourself? sure. I discharge myself very well. I but see. that is not for me to say. I see. <laughs> <laughs> and you know one funny thing. No. They said I am buying the constraints. Mm. I went around every branch meeting I had, I gave each person twenty Ghana cities for transport. Honorable Kote she gave thirty cities as transport. Okara gave 50 cities as transport. Who is buying? Somebody came and said, I'm buying uh, players, and he was uh, going around giving everybody he meets 500 Ghana cities. I have done nothing of that. Yet, they would rent press to go out there and say, oh, the MPP man is buying this with that. With whatever they will do, the grounds is speaking for me. And what the entire do 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 is saying yes to don't. Mm. It can be their pain. But I'll tell them one thing. One of the reasons why I don't bother to do those things they are doing or counter any of it is that an angry lion will never eat grass. An angry lion will never eat grass. Yes. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Why should I eat grass? Why should I go after what they are doing? Why should I? I mean, the... the, the but where an allegation has been made against you, you're supposed to respond. Yes, I I would I would respond. I will respond any allegation in the appropriate forum. An appropriate forum is before committees and everything. Exactly. What, about what is said in the public domo domain? Well, you know what? We have a very rich history in politics in Odododiodo. Mm -hmm. Right from Nkrumah. Odododiodo. We are very active, knowledgeable. When it comes to politics, no one teaches us what to do. No one shapes our opinion. If you want to shape our opinion, join us in Ododo Diodo and do that. We know what matters to us in Ododo Diodo and what does not matter to us. When I know my people, those who don't, those who don't actually live in the constituency, those who have not actually grew up in the constituency, those who have been absent from the constituency will behave the way they are behaving. But if you know the do, 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 you will not behave that way. Jump into the press. I've been on the, uh, the, 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 the uh, front page of uh, one particular newspaper for more than two, three weeks now. Every day, including today, I'm on their front page. And I'm enjoying it. So you've been reading all the things? Oh, I read all. You've been hearing everything? That I've been about. hearing all. And I have but, but you're not bothered because are you suggesting that what's said in the media does not shape opinion? In the duty? A lion would never eat grass. I see. No matter how hungry it is. 
Interesting. <laughs> well, <laughs> me, I wish you all the best on uh, that journey. <laughs> Thank uh, you. But l- first, let, let's acknowledge that Awake Purified Drinking Water is associated with this show. Awake Purified Drinking Water is a product of Casa Preco Company Limited. And so is Savannah Paint also associated with this show. If it has to be paint, make sure it is Savannah Paint. Savannah Paint. Best. Um... I'm going to try to uh, start a discussion on the economy within the short time that we have. Uh, and I'm, and it's, I'm going to take it from the angle of what happened in the Volta region, but a different thing that former President Mahama said. In fact, if you read former President Mahama's post, he said, we are not, the economy is too crippled to tackle comprehensively what happened in the Volta region. That's what he said. Then people took offense to that. They think they, they said it was politicizing the issue because of the that term. The economy is too crippled. Uh, did he say anything wrong when he said the economy is too? Do you agree with him? And that is very charitable to say that the economy is too crippled. The economy we have today is on life support. It's on. It's on life support. Not crippled. It's on. Life support. life support. The moment that life support is taken away, mm. this economy will be dead and gone. And what is the life support that we are on currently? Their yeah. own figures. I don't want to use any form of analysis. Their own figures. Mm. Right? We miss the target in terms of our revenue first in Q1 and Q2, first quarter, second quarter. Okay. In terms of revenue, by about five point nine billion. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Then you come to expenditure. Mm-hmm. We have a favorable variance of about twenty four billion. Mm-hmm. And do you know where that is coming from? It is coming in just because we are not servicing our foreign debt. Okay. So interest payment on the foreign line has been shut down drastically, okay. especially in Q2. Okay. Now, capital expenditure, again, in terms of the foreign, has been shut down. Okay. These two components contributed over $22 billion. That is 90% of the 24 billion favorable variance we had. And so in the first and second quarter, our deficit to finance Mm -hmm. is something over 10 billion. Just assuming that the over the over 10 billion savings on interest payments alone on the foreign line. This is with all the restructuring of our debt on terms of the local. Just imagine what would have been financed in the in the Q1 and Q2, which means we'll be financing something over 23 billion, which we cannot finance based on what IMF is giving us and all that. What it means is that BOG would have to go back to providing government the so-called overdraft. Okay. So, we are here and in this situation only because of the suspension of debt servicing by our foreign creditors. That is the only reason. We are here because in terms of capital expenditure from foreign, we are not spending. We have shut down most of those expenditures and holding on to the foreign currencies. Okay. That is the only reason this economy is standing. These are data coming from the Ministry of Finance. So it is not about, uh, again, it's been more presidential. President Mahama is being more presidential and diplomatic by saying the economy is crippled. 
The economy is on life support as we speak. And when that life support is taken away, the cracks will be visible to everyone. So you're suggesting that if for one reason or the other we have to pay interest yes. to our foreign debt holders, yes. we'll be in serious trouble. Absolutely. It means that in terms of local currency, we will not be able to generate enough local currency mm-hmm. to meet our obligations. And we will also not be able to rake in enough foreign exchange to pay for our debt. Okay. That is what it is. Mm. I see. So that is where you say we are on life support. So without the IMF, where would we be? Because this are without all the IMF, happening. Even, even, even with the 10 billion, almost 50% is coming from the IMF support to us. Okay. So without the IMF and without the suspension of debt servicing with regards to our foreign creditors, Ghana's economy would have been dead and gone. Hmm. Now, having this in mind, because uh, I was also reading an article from, um, um, I, I think, Mr. Nimoy Thompson, Dr. Nimoy Thompson, who was raising similar issues. And having all this in mind, we have to prepare a budget. A, a budget for 2024, an election year, where a lot of people will expect some level of spending to convince them to go with the party, the, the governing party or not. What type of budget should we be looking at? Well, assistance now, we will be highly unable to prepare a budget without our foreign creditors reaching a conclusive agreement with us. Without an agreement with the foreign creditors? Exactly. We will not be able to prepare a budget? Absolutely. Now, a deadline of September was given. Okay. It has been reviewed. Okay. And still, no agreement has been reached. Okay. If we are going into 2024 without an agreement, it will not look good for us. It means that most of our foreign partners will be holding back with their various supports. There are program loans Mm. that will no longer come in for us. And there are project loans that our foreign creditors might be forced to help back on them. And therefore, the future looks very bleak. And for me, I wonder how they will prepare a budget without a conclusive agreement. And what form of agreement should we be looking at? Because already you are saying we are not paying them interest. Um, what should we be looking forward to? An agreement? What type of agreement should we have with them for us to say, at least we have some breathing space to go ahead with? Well, it, it, it will surprise you that the agreements that we would need with our foreign creditors mm. would have to be one that would actually give us some breathing space, Mm. a moratorium, about two years moratorium, not to service our debt. So we need, like, at least for them to commit to saying over the next two years, you neither pay us back our money, nor pay us anything in terms of interest. Exactly. If our foreign creditors should ask for interest, even 50% of what they are entitled to will not fit in into the uh, uh, the structure that we have, it would not fit in. So we are not in the position to say, okay, we'll pay you half. No, we are not. We can't pay half. No. Of interest on loans that we took and yes, used. that 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 will mess up the entire IMF program and mess the economy up Absolutely. completely. It's a difficult kind of uh, target to set for yourself. Absolutely. 
And that is why the negotiation has dragged on. Okay. Till now. Two years. Absolutely. Breathing space. Yeah. Nothing paid. In order for us to be in a position to at least... So, if, if they give us this, because of course, we have had discussions over and over again. Uh, if the, they agree to, let, to a two years moratorium where we don't service the debts, mm -hmm. they don't come and demand anything from us, what would we need to do to put this back on track within two years to be ready to go back to servicing the debt? What we need to do is to create a strong reserve. Okay. That would be a backbone for us to actually meet our obligations okay. with our foreign partners. That is, if you want to return uh, to the uh, 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 international market. Okay. Uh, two, we would have to show a strong signal mm. that we can generate enough local currency in terms of revenue, okay. which we are not able to. I don't know how the picture will look like Q3, Q4. But from what I can tell, watching... So the first quarter, second quarter, we have failed our target. We failed by 5.9 billion, which is not good. And that is why... It means the targets were 5.9 billion CDC. Yeah. Oh, that's our deficit. Yes, that is, that is how much we could have okay. achieved okay. from our target or program. Okay. Yes. So, look, we, our expenditure... We have kept it same. We, we we don't want to touch the other areas of our expenditure. So aside capital expenditure, would you yes. say we are not spending a lot? Exactly. You are saying that the other areas are the, the contributed are only the yes, contributed only ten percent. So the cut you've seen is ten percent. Yes. Ten percent of the provisional. This is twenty-two billion contributing capital expenditure and uh, 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 interest payment mm -hmm. contributed twenty-two billion. That is ninety percent. Okay. So two billion only is coming from expenditure, and for me that is not a good signal. Okay. You want to tell me, and that is why. The, the foreign creditors will be a bit apprehensive about the, the issues. They will say, look, let's, let's wait and watch. Mm -hmm. Let us not commit to anything. So the foreign creditors are not seeing the kind of commitment that they need to see to believe that if we give you this breathing space, you'll be in the position to pay. Absolutely. Us. That you will be disciplined enough to follow the program and make sure we get results in the shortest possible time. So when you talk about discipline, you mean that if we are doing a budget today, what do we need to do? I know you are talking about the foreign creditors, but let's assume you have an agreement with uh, the foreign creditors. What next? Because you are talking about uh, increasing our reserves. Mm -hmm. Increasing our reserves. Uh, In this period that we are, we are not required, mm. right? To pay. To pay. What we should be targeting is an elevated reserve okay. that will support us in the future when our commitment mm. comes up for us to actually take up. Okay. Now, the, the issue is two scenarios. If our foreign creditors says, we want to take part of our interest now, mm -hmm. what will be the situation? Okay. Are we able to keep the level of reserve required in terms of foreign currencies. Okay. Are we able to generate enough local currencies? Okay. That is the crux of this issue. For me, my opinion is that we are up to our neck mm. when it comes to revenue. Okay. If you push further, it will break the banks. Okay. So what we need to look more into is to actually find ways to bring down expenditure drastically. Okay. So at this point, because you're saying two things, um, increase our reserve, 
raise more revenue. Yes. Now you're saying on the revenue side, we cannot add it. There, there's no way we can't find money anywhere. Yeah, there is. We can't increase it with with what is going on in this economy. You mm. cannot. What is it about the economy that makes it difficult for? Because you to almost all the sectors are showing negative growth. So negative out of growth. negative growth, I don't see how government will raise more revenue. So the <laughs> so the the revenue aspect is off. off. So your 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 view is that if government really wants to show to perhaps show a better performance real commitment. between revenue and yes. expenditure. It should focus on expenditure, Absolutely. trim it significantly, exactly. so the revenue will look like it is yeah. doing better. Yeah. Okay. I I I I, I believed that we could have achieved about uh, another ten billion reduction in salaries and emolument. Oh, that would require a lot. That would require a lot of pain. Yes. But that will put us back. That is what will put us back. Look, go and check the 2015, 2016. Significantly, we have reduced from 2015 to 2016 over 3 billion on our deficit. Okay. Without any of these programs like the DDP and all that taking place in 2015, 2016. That is the achievement from nine billion to about six billion. That is what commitment means. Okay. Now the issue is, you are handed over a company that is so high mm-hmm. on emolument, and this company is gasping for breath. What will be the options for you? The first option. And this is a rule of the top, is to reduce emolument and salaries. Yes, it will hurt, mm. but it will keep that hen that will lay the golden eggs. We are waiting for that end to die and attempt resuscitating it and getting it to lay eggs again. That will be too painful compared to what I have described earlier. I see. Hmm. So this is where we are. Absolutely. Hmm. So we are looking forward to a deal with our creditors and then try to do a fine balance of increasing reserves and uh, uh, are we in a position to increase our reserves? We our have, foreign reserves. We, 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 we are. We enough dollars to be able to put back into... Not touch it, keep it there. Well, when when production is low, certainly uh, you cannot uh, be on the same wavelengths as uh, when uh, production was growing and all that, you know. So, yes, um, the foreign currencies are also not coming in as it should be. Remittances are dropping. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, we would have to look at the world scenario mm-hmm. in perspective, and then we can see that clearly it's more difficult to to earn money out there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the the what what is left to us is our resources, natural resources, and how we manage it. Um, we, we we had oil for gold and all that. I mean that 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 was a wrong move, mm. and um, I kept saying that there is nothing like oil for gold. Mm. What we are doing is to swap, okay. is to say that take my gold, give me so much in dollars. Okay, I will pay interest for giving me the dollars, and I will use that dollars to go and buy uh, oil. So it, there is nothing like gold for oil or oil for gold. No, there is nothing like that. What is happening is that we are swapping our gold. And we, we, are, we are incurring costs on those swaps we are engaging in. And that is not helping us. I thought that the, the CD uh, we are printing uh, at the Printing House Bank of Ghana mm. would rather be used to buy the gold mm-hmm. And use the gold as reserve. Okay. 
So buy the gold and use that reserve. And leverage on our gold reserve. Okay. Since it is rated in foreign currency. Okay. And therefore, we will know what our reserve is. If they have done that, we would have the credibility of raising more foreign exchange okay. in future. What it means is that you can actually uh, go to your creditor and say, I have so much gold. And the event of my responsibilities uh, showing up, I can actually use my gold to pay you. Okay. And so give me so much. But not give me so much to be wasted. Give me so much to engage in productive, to engage the productive sectors, which we are still not doing. Tax policies has also not helped. The tax policies we are having today have not helped. You know, today businessmen feels being attacked yeah. from all fronts, and that is not helping the business front. Okay. Because when that happens, when they feel the tax authorities are not being fair, mm -hmm. they are overindulging themselves. They are oppressing us. Businesses will call back. Yeah. Production will subside. And the effect is the negative growth we are seeing today. Mm. So, okay. So, <laughs> and <laughs> uh, th th there's a lot of issues that immediately come to mind because you're talking about businesses now deciding instead of increasing production, I'm slowing down. Yeah. Mm. Uh, which means that the revenue you are targeting will certainly not get. No. Okay. And it will affect growth. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that means that essentially, are you proposing that some taxes should go? Yes. When you're seeking more revenue. Look, one of the biggest uh, uh, um, uh, area we lost out is still the E-Levy. Mm. We, we had an adverse variance of over 50 percent so even with all the reductions mm -hmm. in terms of the the rates and all that e levy is still not performing okay it has helped leave its usefulness and and watch it what was meant to actually propel uh, growth is now slowing growth because people are not doing their normal things on that platform. Okay. People have become wiser. Go to this man and load your wallet. Instead of making payments, I will issue a cash out instead of paying you. Okay. I'm prepared to give my phone to you for you to go out there and withdraw. Then send you the money. Exactly. And incur charges. Exactly. So if you're a businessman who is moving a lot of money, after all the taxes that you pay, mm -hmm. if you are paying through that platform, you are losing more money. Absolutely. So everything we are doing, so a lot of what we are doing is counterproductive. It's actually. counterproductive. Oh, okay. And then the next line we have lost, uh, we lost out also over 50%. Is the company taxes. Okay. So, clearly, that should tell you what the situation is. The taxes from the companies yes. are going down are going by down. about 50%. More than 50%, around 57%. Hmm. So, clearly, a lot needs to change, and the direction we are in, in is wrong. Absolutely wrong. I see. Well, if you just join me, Nia Boyna is in studio with me. We have about five minutes to go. But let me remind you that Betika says I should tell you that she's a no city. So they'll give you a whopping 175% of a bonus from them to bet on your favorite teams or play your favorite virtual and casino games when you register. Go to betika.com or dial star 263 hash on your YAM phone to register and play. Terms and conditions apply. That is from Betika.
Me, we have to wrap up, but sure. then you wanted the finance minister to go even after seeing the 20, I was it the 2021 budget? 2021 budget. budget. You wanted yeah. the finance minister to go immediately. Exactly. Okay. He has not gone. Mm -hmm. He's still seated there. Yeah. He's still in charge of finance. Yeah. Okay. Recently, there was even an attempt to haul out the governor of the Bank of Ghana. I'm not sure the opposition is done yet. They said they'll be back. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, the, that one. So, those two people mm -hmm. will still be our arrowheads. They will spearhead the preparation of these budgets with the IMF watching on. Uh, can we still have them there and hope that the IMF is able to do a good enough job to keep them in check? Well, that is why we are still suffering credibility issues. Even though the IMF is in there, our foreign creditors don't trust the hands that we have in there. And it's as simple as that. And that was the reason why we were calling for new persons to take over and bring in a new breeze of, you know, ideas and all that. But unfortunately, uh, uh, they chose this way. And we are all looking on. Uh, and I know it will come back to hurt us. One day we would get back and and realize that we, we made a huge mistake as a nation putting those two in charge of our macro uh, economy. Mm. And and they have been disaster so far. So as far as you're concerned, those two still, if there's opportunity, they should be kicked out? Any day. Even if it is left with a day in the administration. Is it a matter of their direction or is it uh, as in policy ideology or is it a matter of the kind of things they've done with the economy, as in um, the actions they've taken? You, you know what? Uh, when when we were we were very young and we were in one of the big audit firms, and let me mention PKF, uh, a lot of our friends will go out, and uh, you know we deal with a lot of figures. Just imagine you you are auditing a, a whole bank, okay. and you, the, the trial balance is never ending. Mm. And they will struggle and struggle. They have been on the job from day one. They will struggle and struggle and struggle, and they will still not be able to balance the account. So normally, uh, they get back to the office and they will say, uh, Michael, take it over and balance it for us. Or they will give it to any other of our colleagues. And then within some few minutes, you are able to find where the faults are coming from or what they have failed to recognize. Mm. Sometimes when you sit in front of a bunch of figures for a very long time, you will not see your way through. Okay. But when a fresh mind, fresh eyes sits behind it, they are quick to find where the challenges are and to solve them. That is the situation we find ourselves a Fresh in. pair of eyes. Yes. Those there are tired. Are they tired or they are on the wrong trajectory? Well, when you are tired, you will certainly, with figures, when you are tired, you will certainly be on the wrong trajectory. There is no two ways. When we talk of numbers, it is not like uh, 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 English where you can use several words to, to describe the same thing. Uh, no. When it is one, it is one when it comes to numbers. And that is where... I kept saying mm. that they are tired. They still want to justify the tiger tree they believed they were on and it was right, which has not helped this economy since they won. Mm. Since they won. And that is the same tiger tree they have kept. To. Remind yourself, they came in by saying new sons taxes. Just after some few months, they brought in more than nuisance taxes. Okay. And year on year, they have burdened the Ghanaian businessman with all sorts of taxes. Till date, they have kept to that same route. And there is no way out for them. Businesses are up to their neck. 
they are not going to accept any taxes again, yet they don't have the capabilities to say we are warding of this tax. Mm -hmm. So what would they do? They will slow, okay. keep slowing until you do something about it. And these are people who believe that, oh, businesses are not being truthful. And therefore, let's keep putting the pressure on them. If this pressure on businesses keep going the same way, and in the new budget, any attempt to raise more local currency in terms of revenue will crash business totally. Any attempt to raise more revenue, local, local, will crash business. Absolutely. So if they introduce even a tax of 1%, it will crash. What we have right, right now is crashing us. Most businesses, I can tell you on authority, are just hanging in there, waiting for some uh, uh, stimulus package to get back, waiting for some signal that will, a positive signal that will show that growth is coming, change is coming, and you will see how things will gel up in this country. I see. Me, uh, we have to go. Thank you very much. You're As welcome. always, we did so much within the small space of space of time that we've had. Sure. Uh, well, I think there there'll be further conversations on where the budget should head to. Yeah. Uh, subsequently, but thank you, thank you for coming in. Right. I wish you all the best in the video. Thank uh, you. The, the, this, uh, <laughs> that's a quite a race. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the end, you realize it wasn't a race. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it's the race is not. In fact, we haven't even gotten to the race of itself. Of course. Uh, I imagine the kind of pressure and everything. Having one moment a date is set, the next moment is postponed. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but yeah. yeah. You have stuck in there. Sure. So stick in there somewhere. Right. Me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Abuanan, is a financial analysis, uh, aspirant, NDC parliamentary candidate for Odododio uh, constituency, taking us to exactly three minutes past one. Let me say a happy birthday to Abdul Mumin Jagwesi. Abdul Mumin Jagwesi. Happy birthday to Francis Chumesi Odum. Uh, Kweku. A happy birthday to Kukuchi Messi Odum. Abdul Mumin Jagwesi has also been following us for a long time. And to my very good friend, Ivy Setoji, who celebrates her birthday today. So happy birthday to all of you. We are back same time tomorrow with another edition of the Gold Morning Conversation, including asking Mr. Ramon Acha why he thinks that what the OSP wrote as a report is uh, like a storybook. Hmm. Anyway, I'm Senna Numbo, Facebook Live producer, Alaska B, show produced by Eric Boatin, Patrick Asford, Boedu, and of course, uh, Nancy Amaleo, Kekeli Bimpe, lawyer, oh boy. We are back tomorrow. One station. Across. 20, 22, 23, 24, and more. We don't chat.